Today we're going to be talking about a day in the life of a wildland firefighter on assignment. Hey there, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Ronnie Ocampo. I'm a former wildland firefighter and on this channel we talk all things wildland firefighting from health and fitness, fire education, mental health, and everything in between. If you're interested in wildland firefighting, I highly suggest you subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you guys know when I upload. Like I said, we are talking about the day in the life while on an assignment. So I'm going to give you like a basic timeline. Yes, every fire is different and may have some like little nuances here and there, but I'm just gonna give you like an estimated timeline of what you can expect when you go out onto a fire assignment. First off, we're gonna say there's a day and a night shift. So that is something that I want you to be aware of that you may get up to an assignment and they're like, all right, great, I'm glad, so glad you just drove all this way and now you are going to be on the night shift. So go get some sleep right now and I'll see you in a few hours. You're like, oh, we just, uh, we just got here and I normally sleep at nighttime. Now you're gonna have to work during the nighttime. So just be prepared for that. So it sucks, but sometimes being on night shift is the best because you get to do firing operations. So it's, a, it's like a give and a take. Um, it's going to be not fun. I wanna say the B word, it's gonna be a B word um, to have to try and sleep during the day because you're gonna have trucks going in and out, people chatting and going and getting food and going to the bathroom if you're in camp. I'm talking about like a big fire. So typically they'll like set aside over in this little area of like, these are the night shift people. They'll put up signs, say, please be quiet, please be respectful. Um, so that way you can try and get some sleep. So this is where I would recommend bringing an eye mask, bringing your earplugs. Um, at least that's what I would do because sleep is precious, man. And I'm going to do everything I can to get every ounce of sleep. You may think that, oh, you're being like a drama queen. I don't even care. I need some sleep so that way I can work during the night and not like fall asleep halfway through a burning operation. You know what I'm saying? So here's your timeline for like a typical day shift. You're gonna wake up at 5 a.m. You're gonna gather all your gear, get it loaded up, get it loaded on the trucks or on the buggies or wherever you're putting it. Load all that, your tent, your your sleeping bag, your rolling mat, whatever you got. Um, you're gonna pack all that up and put that away. And you're gonna head into camp for breakfast around like 5.30. You're gonna nom down your food real quick. Then around six o'clock, you're gonna head over to the operational brief. You're gonna get briefed. Your leadership may send you to go get some water, lunches, supplies, get all that loaded up, and then they'll come back and either like pre-brief you on stuff or they're just gonna have you stay at the briefing. Um, typically for me, since I was like the rookie, like the lowest level, my leadership would go to the briefings. I would go get lunches, water, make sure everything is loaded and ready to go. And then once they came back, they would kind of give us like the little rundown of this is what we're doing for today. It kind of just depends on what your leadership wants you to do. So once you have your assignment around seven o'clock, you're gonna head out to the line, wherever that looks like. You may take a helicopter, you may drive there, you may hike there, um, maybe a combination of the two or three or whatever. So there's many, many ways you can get to a fire, you may jump down to the fire, you know what I'm saying? You can drive your little dozer out there um, or the water tender. Shout out to the water tenders. Um, anyways, <laughs> so many ways you can get out to the fire line. Then around eight o'clock is about when you're gonna start actually working on the fire line. Again, this is a very loose timeline. It could be a little bit different. The timing could be off, but this is just like the general timeline. Of course, once you're out there, you're gonna have different fuels, terrain, weather. So obviously you're gonna make sure your situational awareness is good. You're gonna get your LCESs, your lookouts, um, LC communications, escape routes and safety zones. So from your leadership, make sure that you get briefed on that. If you do not understand something, make sure that you understand it. No question out there is stupid. Some people will tell you that it is, but I'm gonna tell you that it's not. If you don't understand something, if you don't know something, ask. And if someone makes you feel stupid for it, it's your life. It's your life on the line. And this is where I get real passionate about it. If you don't understand something, I don't care, ask. It's not just your life, but now also your teammate's life if you don't know what's going on. So um, that's where I get passionate, so ask questions. So once you're out on the line, it's typically in a remote location, of course, depending on the location, but just say you're in a remote location where you're not gonna have cell phone service, you're not gonna be able to text anybody, you're gonna have to talk to the people that are on the left and the right of you, and then also you're gonna have your radios. So that's typically your only way of communication. And of course, you can probably expect hot, dry, dusty, crusty work environment. <laughs> 
Some of the physical work that you can expect to be doing, of course, is hiking to the line. Uh, you could be cutting down trees with chainsaws. You could be a swamper who's actually pulling all that material away that people are those trees that they're cutting down. You could be moving rocks. Uh, you could be digging line. You could be uh, doing a hose lay. There's all types of work that you're gonna be doing. Around one o'clock, that's when you're gonna get your little sack lunch, your little brown bag if you're lucky, um, or you'll have your MRE or just like have some snacks from your little pack. Um, so that can depend on how long your leadership wants to give you a break. Sometimes it was 30 minutes, sometimes it was 45 minutes, sometimes it was 15 minutes. So it just kind of depends on the situation at hand um so you just eat what you can get what you can done and have a little have a little rest have a little drink and get back to working on the line so if this is a 16 hour day you're gonna stay out there till around seven o'clock if it's more of like an eight hour work day think around like four five o'clock probably you're gonna start heading off the line getting all your gear hiking back to the trucks um and then heading toward back towards camp once you get back to camp, you're gonna get some dinner, you're gonna shower if you can or if you want to, some people don't like to. Um, you're gonna set up your, your sleeping area, your tents, your sleeping bags, whatever, however you like to sleep. Some people like to sleep in the tents, some people like to sleep in the dirt. So it just depends on whatever you wanna do. Also gonna have to refurbish the trucks, um, tools and things like that. You're gonna maybe have a little bit of downtime to either like text someone, call someone. Um, I've seen people read books. So it just, you have like a little bit of downtime to yourself before it's time to get some much needed sleep so you can get up and do it again the next day. Now, if you're leadership, you're probably filling out time cards and stuff like that. I, like CTRs, I don't ever remember doing that. I think my leadership just did that. So um, I kind of had it easy, but also I was probably like refurbishing tools while they were doing like the paperwork side of things. So um, depends on the position that you're in and what you're doing. That's a general timeline of being out on a fire assignment. Again, a disclaimer, all fires are different, but that, and all crews are different, what they do, what they, all that jazz, but this is like a generalized, this is kind of what you can expect when you go out onto a fire assignment. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If so, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you guys are commenting any comments, questions, concerns that you have. You know, I love to hear from you. Also make sure you're checking down the description box for all kinds of resources on my website. Remember, Advice from Seasoned Wildland Firefighters is out. That's an ebook version. And then also it's up on Amazon so you can get like a physical copy of the book. So hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Okay, we're done. Discipline that you need. You just, you need some discipline. You need some discipline in your life. Just kidding. Anyways, uh, okay. Bye. <laughs>